Iranian activist Nargis Mohammadi has won the Nobel Peace Prize. Mohammadi has fought for women's rights and democracy in the Islamic Republic for decades and faced harsh punishment from the authoritarian state. She is currently behind bars in Iran, but following today's Peace Prize announcement, calls for her release are growing. Nargis Mohammadi, one of Iran's most prominent human rights activists, can now add Nobel Peace Prize laureate to her list of accolades. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2023 to Nargis Mohammadi for her fight against the oppression of women in Iran and her fight to promote human rights and freedom for all. For most of her life, Mohammadi has fought against her country's theocratic government, which strictly controls women's lives. She has been whipped, arrested numerous times, and has spent years in prison. But even behind bars, she helped lead a nationwide protest movement last year after the death of Gina Mahsa Amini in police custody, a young woman who was arrested for the way she was dressed. Mohammadi gave a written statement from prison to the New York Times on the eve of winning the prize. The global support and recognition of my human rights advocacy makes me more resolved, more responsible, more passionate, and more hopeful. I also hope this recognition makes Iranians protesting for change stronger and more organized. Victory is near. Mohammadi's husband and children haven't seen her in years, but they watched the announcement from their home in Paris with pride. I'm very, very proud of my mom. She deserves this award. It's for all her work. She's committed practically half her life. And this prize is not just for my mother. It's for the struggle. It's for women, life and freedom. Mohammadi's supporters in Iran said they hoped the award would encourage others to follow her lead. I'm overjoyed that an Iranian woman has been honored with the prize. I hope this will pave the way for all Iranian women to move forward. I'm proud that an Iranian woman has been chosen, and I think it's time for other women in the country to think about how we can capitalize on Mohammadi's experience. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has called on Iranian authorities to release Nargis Mohammadi in time for the prize ceremony in December. We can speak now to Gisunia. She's a human rights lawyer and the director of the Strategic Litigation Project at the Atlantic Council. Good to see you again, Gisu. Now, you fought for human rights in Iran for years as well. What does this prize for Nargis Mohammadi and the women's rights movement in Iran mean for you and your work? I couldn't be more thrilled that Nargis Mohammadi is the recipient of this award. Anybody familiar with human rights work in Iran will know that she has been on the front lines of this fight for years, and not only for women, but for other marginalized groups in the country, whether they be the Baha'i religious minority or other groups that suffer from violations under the Iranian regime. Um, couldn't be more thrilled. She's paid the ultimate price for her activism with her freedom, she's currently serving a 10-year sentence of imprisonment. Yeah. Now, her receiving the Nobel Peace Prize has prompted calls for her release from prison. Do you think this will make any difference, or could the increased attention even have negative consequences for her? I think it's so critical that she's received this award because she's somebody who's already under intense scrutiny. This is a name that is very familiar to the Iranian regime. It is familiar to anybody fighting for freedom in the country. So it's not an unknown person who now might be dealing with the negative implications. She knows um, what she's taken on. She has been estranged from her family because of this, you know, these consecutive sentences. She's had 13 imprisonments five convictions. This has totaled over 31 years. So she's well aware of the risks, but she's always been an incredible principled human rights defender. And I think it's so critical that the Islamic Republic of Iran understand that the world is still watching and they are still paying attention to the calls of the woman life freedom movement.
You have long been pushing for the international community to hold the Iranian authorities accountable for the human rights violations committed in the country. Have we seen any progress on that, especially since the death of Gina Masa Amini? So what I think we saw at first was that when the Islamic Republic was under global scrutiny and when countries were strongly making statements in solidarity with the women and girls in Iran, we saw action. We saw the Islamic Republic removed from the UN Commission on the Status of Women. We saw the establishment of a UN fact-finding mission last fall to examine those abuses. But then global attention shifted. And slowly, we saw that the Islamic Republic decided to just double down on their gender discriminatory framework by installing new state security units um, that are policing hijab, that are enforcing these gender discriminatory laws. One thing that I'll say is that Nargis Mohammadi, just the other day, from prison, signed a legal brief that is asking for the UN to make gender apartheid a crime that is recognized international, under international law. We now have her as a Nobel Peace Prize laureate on that brief, but she's even leading that call from behind bars. How is she keeping up the pressure from behind bars and from a place like Evan Prison, no less? I think just the moral weight of what she's done over the years obviously inspires so many and really injects hope into what can often be a hopeless situation. We often say that um, pushing for human rights change in Iran is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, and there's a whole new generation of young women who've been inspired to challenge this gender discriminatory framework. And I think um, it should mean everything when we see people who have been fighting that fight for decades continue on and not give up. Mm. Ms. Mohammadi believes that change can only be achieved by affecting it from within through a strong civil society, but the regime has successfully and violently quashed dissent and protest time and time again. Will the people really be able to overpower the oppressors without outside help? Um, these things work in tandem, so it depends what we mean by outside help. I think it's absolutely critical that every measure is taken to weaken the Islamic Republic, and I think that's what she has called for as well in terms of that international solidarity, in terms of actions at the United Nations, in terms of governments with bilateral relations with Iran raising the human rights situation and demanding that discriminatory laws be put aside be set aside. So it really works from a grassroots, people-based movement, but also when a regime is stifling its people, we need to make sure that we're not helping that regime in that oppression. Kisunia, always great speaking to you. That was Kisunia from the Atlantic Council. Thanks for your time. Thank you.